them some of the realities of our righteous predecessors. Mu'ad ibn Sa'id, he said, we were sitting with Ata ibn Rabah, one of the scholars. And while he was sitting, <coughs> a man was speaking, narrating a hadith, and the other one interrupted him and finished the hadith on his behalf. He said to them, Subhanallah, what are these manners? Wallahi, I will be speaking to someone who will be narrating a hadith to me, and I am more knowledgeable of the hadith than him, but I appear to him as if I don't know the hadith. He will be narrating a hadith, which I know more than he does. I'm a scholar of hadith, he may not be. But when I listen to him, I make it seem like I don't know the hadith. Why? Manners in speaking, controlling the tongue. Nowadays, we can't help it. As soon as a brother begins the ayah, we finish it. Not when, when, not when he asks, right? When he, he's just trying to tell you something, we just finish the ayah. I know the ayah, akhi. I know the hadith. This is the, according to the righteous predecessors, this is this manner is not befitting. Now, we fall into this sometimes, you know, unintentionally, but we need to be mindful of that. Uh, Abu Dawood, rahimahullah, the author of the collection of a hadith, he said that Imam Ahmad, <coughs> rahimahullah, used to never engage in the worldly talk. When he will be sitting with the people, be talking about food, talking about, you know, uh, you know, home, the children, he would never say a single thing. As soon as they spoke about knowledge, then he would get involved. If it was about the deen of Allah, he spoke. Dunya, ah, none of my business. Imagine someone like this, speaking, sitting with the people, they're talking about the dunya, nothing to say. They mention a hadith, he has something to say. They mention an ayah, he has something to say. This is how they used to be. Al-Awza'i said, indeed, the hypocrite says a lot, but does only little. Whereas the believer says a little, but does a lot. It's the other way around. <coughs> Sufyan ibn Uyayna said, a wise man was going on a journey, and he came across a group of people who were having, you know, a lot of conversations amongst themselves. He gave him a salam, and he said to them, when you speak, Speak like people who realize that Allah hears them and the angels write down what they say. Speak like people who realize, speak like people who realize that Allah hears them and the angels record what they say. Do we have this in mind when we speak? Allahu A'lam. Do we think of that Allah is hearing us right now? Do we ever pause before we speak? Is this pleasing to Allah? Is this statement going to be pleasing to Allah? As Imam Shafi'i said, he said, before you speak, think. If what you're going to say is good, say it. If it's not going to be good, then don't say it. Well, the problem with us is we don't think. As soon as the idea comes to mind, ala tool it's out. As soon as we think, we don't think whether it's good or bad, we must say it immediately. But they used to be the other way around. So he told them, be mindful. When you speak, Remember that Allah hears you and the angels write down what you're saying. <coughs> al muwarriq said, there's something that I have been struggling against for 10 years and I have not been able to fulfill it yet. However, I will not surrender until I fulfill it. They said, what is it? He said, minding my business, not saying anything when the matter does not concern me. Remaining silent when the matter that is being discussed does not concern me. Ten years he's been struggling and he intends on going for the rest of his life until he acquires this quality. When the thing doesn't concern him, he doesn't speak. And the Prophet said, Min husni islam al mar'i tarkuhu ma la yani. From the good understanding of the Muslim, the good religious commitment of the believer, the believer, the Muslim, is that he avoids that which does not concern him. He does not busy himself with that which does not concern him. Fudayr ibn al-Ayyad radiallahu anhu said, or rahimahullah said, there are two actions which will kill the heart. Much talking and much eating. And these are our field of expertise in this day and time. This is where we, you know, we do the best in eating, the variety of food that is out in the world, you know, we're able to explain to the person how this particular food is cooked, even though none of us, you know, is a chef, or, or cook to begin with, but somehow we know every ingredient in this particular food. This food is made of this kind of spice, with this kind of vegetables, and so on and so forth, this kind of sauce. And we know the procedure of how to put the food together so it can taste yummy. But if we were to ask the same person, Akhi, do you have one hadith memorized from the Prophet Usually the answer is no. So we're good at food, 
but we're not good concerning that which benefits us. And the same thing we could say about, uh, you know, talking about things which uh, just idle talk. So these are some of the reminders. I don't want to depress anyone. I'm the first on the list. But this is something that we need to be, we need to realize. The point being, brothers and sisters, that sometimes we just, we're on vacation, we're just in deep sleep. So much so that we forget these realities, which, the, which our, our righteous predecessors used to live, not speak about, they used to live these things. So Allah gave the human beings the ability to do these things. We are able to do these things, we just need to be reminded of them. And the final reminder and the best reminder is that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُوا أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Remember this ayah. I and you should remember this ayah whenever we speak. On the day where their tongues and their hands and their feet will bear witness against everything that they used to do. Everything that we did will be brought to account. وَمَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيد we do not utter a single statement except that there is an angel, an observer, recording it down. Every single word that we say is either for us or against us on the day of judgment. Or if it's idle in between, then we will wish we had spent that time in something which is pleasing to Allah. <laughs> Secondly, the second reminder, we will never attain success until we are among those who avoid idle talk. An idle talk, which is, uh, you know, lagu, uh, according to the ulama, can include haram things or things which bring no benefit. Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِدُونَ They have attained success, the believers, those who are in their prayer, humbly submissive to Allah, and those who strictly avoid idle talk. For us to be among the khashi'een, if we want submissiveness in the salah, if we want success, ultimately, we need to avoid idle talk. Talk which does not benefit, be it sinful talk or something which is not for us or against us to begin with. <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ warned us, أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَا بَنِي آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ Most of the sins of the children of Adam, of the son of Adam, is due to his tongue. Most of the sins that we will commit will be with our tongues. And it is a tongue which will lead other body parts to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, الدُّنْيَا مَلْعُونَ مَلْعُونٌ مَا فِيهَا إِلَّا ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ وَمَا وَلَاهُ أَوْ عَالِمًا أَوْ مُتَعَلِّمًا He said, this dunya is cursed and so is everything in it except the remembrance of Allah and whatever is associated with that. And, <coughs> or <coughs> a scholar and a student. The remembrance of Allah Everything that is involved with goodness, enjoying what is good, forbidding what is evil, da'wah, Qur'an, so on and so forth, and learning and teaching. This is the, this is the value of the dunya. Everything else may be a source of la'na, may be a source of curse upon the person. Maybe if the person was to favor that over that which was mentioned in this hadith, then he would be among the inhabitants of the hellfire. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters in Islam, this tongue is as they say a double-edged sword you we can either use it to enter jannah or we could use it to be prohibited from jannah and enter jahannam it depends on how we use it we use it so often all day it is moving we need to be mindful of allah every time we speak before we speak evaluate the speech is this going to be good will this be considered backbiting is this gossiping that will cause corruption among the Muslims? Am I about to say a lie? Is this mocking the deen? And the list goes on. Every time we want to speak, we should remember that to the best of our abilities. When we fall short, then we need to realize that what we did was a big sin. And it is not enough just to ignore it. We need to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal from that particular sin. So I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant me and you the ability and the means and the courage and the, the confidence and the power to listen to the reminders, act upon the reminders, and implement them in our lives, and consequently teach them to those who are around us, really is able to do all things.